Hello and welcome to another episode of the Agency Leadership Podcast. I'm Chip Griffin. And I'm Jenny Dietrich. And we're here to talk to you about the first time we met you. No? Yes? Anything? I, I have to have some kind of hook. <laughs> So, Maybe from now on what we'll do is when we when we work on our topics, we will also work on the segues. Fine. <laughs> you know what? How about from now on, we're just going to have you do the opens. I'm not, I'm oh, just going to. Well, no, I, I don't want that kind of pressure. All we, right, I'll we, stop making we, fun of you. We, I'm not going to make fun of you. I'm good. You're good. That was an amazing, excellent transition. Thank you. You're welcome. See? That's what it took. So... In all seriousness, we are going to talk about first meetings with prospects. And this is a topic idea that I got from uh, LinkedIn because Lee McKnight Jr. of RSW US, an agency sales outsourcing firm, uh, wrote an article and had a post where he talked about an agency principal that he had been speaking with uh, recently and, and talked about how uh, this agency owner handles first meetings. And this agency owner prefers to meet in person or by Zoom video or something like that for a first meeting. Fine. Okay. I, I'm with you on that. I, anytime you can make a more human connection with someone, that's great. But the, the reason um, why this individual didn't really like phone calls was because he takes what's called a team approach to prospecting. Mm -hmm. And he would have as many as five of his employees on that initial prospect call. And so I think that's worth discussing. And, um, you know, the broader question is, how do you handle first meetings with a prospect? So I, th I mean, I read the article as well. And I think a couple of things, I think that what the agency owner is saying is they like for their team to be involved. So they hear from the horse's mouth, you know, everything that is, so there's no middleman conversation. Um, Personally, I think a phone call would work better for that because you can then have people on the line and just listen, but not participate. But I 100% agree that you should not, you shouldn't trot five people out to a new business meeting if it's face to face or on Zoom um, ever because <laughs> for, for the first initial meeting, because it's so overwhelming. I mean, imagine if you had a meeting with your accountant, uh, you know, you were looking for new accounting firms and they trotted out five people or attorneys and they trotted, trotted out five people to the first initial meeting. You would just be like, what the right. heck just happened? <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's, it, to me, it's, it, it, there are any number of reasons why this is a bad idea. You, you've overwhelmed the prospect. So, you know, that tends to cause people to shut down. Uh, anytime that you've got an individual in a meeting and it's one against many, that's just that's not generally right. a good dynamic. So if they're not yep. bringing multiple people, you generally shouldn't, um, because it just it creates. Yeah, I mean, in any meeting, that's just kind of a weird setup unless both sides have agreed that that's how it's going to be. Sure. Uh, when you've got that kind of imbalance. If they have five people, then you can have five people. Right, and I mean, if you have three, one can have five. I mean, that's fine, but but one versus many is just, it's not generally speaking a great dynamic to have unless there's really defined purpose. So, you know, sometimes when in the past when I've been dealing with like a web hosting company about some enterprise solutions, you know, they may have a sales rep and a technical person. Okay, that's that's fine Fair. because right. they're, they're fulfilling very different roles. But the to me, the other problem with this is that it's a waste of resources because that first call, you're just as much qualifying the client as they are trying to learn about you. And right. so if you've taken five or six people and, and you put all of you on this first call and, and you don't have, at that point, you don't have enough information to know if you're even possibly a good fit. You're just wasting your team's time that they could be spending on something else. So, you know, I, I get the instinct of wanting to have your team involved, and I think they should absolutely be involved in the business development process. You don't want to have, you know, one person selling and then coming back after the contract is signed and say, "Okay, Jenny, now here are the things you have to do." Right, right. That's right, terrible. right, right. That, yeah, that's, that's not terrible. a good idea yes. either. But that right. first meeting, right. it's it's really just be the beginning of the relationship, and you're both learning about each other. Yeah, and I totally agree. I mean, when you get to the pitch process, where you're saying, "Okay." this is how I think we can work together and this is what it looks like, then absolutely bring your team along and they should be involved in those those kinds of conversations. And at that point, there's probably on the, the prospect side, there's probably gonna be more people involved as well. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, the, the, that first initial meeting, I 100% agree that it's really about um, 
finding out if the, if you're a good fit, what their goals are, what they're trying to achieve, if they're qualified, if you should be working with them. And, you know, you, I, I call it finding the red flags, but you're qualifying them as, as much as they are you. And 100%, it's, it's a, it's a waste of time and resources. If you don't know yet, if they're going, if it's something you're going to pursue. Mm -hmm. So when you're having a first call with a prospect. You know, what are the things that you're looking for? You mentioned red flags, but you know, what how long do they typically last? What's your approach to those calls and and you know, what are you trying to accomplish out of that first one? I mean, we it is to to figure out if they if they would be a good fit for us. Um, a lot of times I have conversations. I just had a conversation this morning in fact with somebody who is in desperate need of crisis help and i you know i'm certainly happy to have the conversation but from a especially for that service it it has to be pretty it has to fit a pretty specific niche for us to be able to say yes or no and if not then i can get enough information to refer them to somebody else um, so that's always my goal is to figure out are there any red flags and you know through this whole pandemic and social injustice and everything that's been going on in in 2020 i've been joking that one of the questions i sh i should ask is are you a racist which you can't really ask <laughs> but you i mean you, i guess you could but, but you're not going to get in that the, honest the answer thing. most yeah i was going to say most most people are not going to say yep i'm a racist yep totally right yeah but there are questions that i do ask to figure out where that person's ethical lines are and what their values are and whether or not they align with ours. Mm -hmm. So that, that first call, how long does it typically last? Are you, you know, do, do you take an hour? Do, yeah. Okay. Yeah. An hour. Um, and I try to do those on zoom so that you can, I mean, it doesn't replace foot face to face for sure, but it does give you a, an extra oomph, you know, cause, because then you can read body language and see, you know, how people react to the questions you're asking versus just hearing it. Right, and you can tell if they're not paying attention or, you know. Right. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Junie, did you say Get, something? Yeah. It, getting up to go and look out the window, that's, that happened once. I was like, oh, okay. That is that is that is unique and different, although I, I have had yeah. a lot of mm -hmm. those strange experiences. Um, you know, I, I think that there is, you know, we moved, and, and I don't want to take this off topic because we already talked about Zoom fatigue, but I think we've moved from the early stages of the quarantine period where, people were very forgiving. And so, you know, people, you know, kind of like, okay, stuff happens to now people are like, eh, I can do whatever I want. So I, I'm just going to get up and wander <laughs> off in the middle. No, I mean, yeah. we're forgiving, yeah. but you still got to stay focused. Um, I mean, I <laughs> a great example of that is, and not to take us too far off, but I'll just give this, a friend of mine said that they were doing their, they had their first first day of their national sales conference and they were doing it virtually. And one of the account executives was pooping on video. <laughs> True story. Yep. On mute? Mm -hmm. or? No. Yeah. In the, and their screen grabs, of course. Of course. Well, we're, that's that's the era that we're in. Wow. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's so, bad. yeah, this is where we are. That's this something you shouldn't are. do on a prospect call. And if the prospect does that. Or ever. That's, that's, that's a red flag. Well, yes, but I was, try, <laughs> I was trying to bring it back. <laughs> trying to come back to the actual topic, Ginny. You know? Don't ever do that on video, period. That's but definitely not doing a prospect call. I sound think. advice, but if that's something that you've just learned by listening to this podcast, you probably shouldn't be listening to this podcast. But... <laughs> Anywho, all right, let's get back somewhat yep. close mm -hmm. to the rails, at least, and not lay down across them. Um, <laughs> you know, but but I I think you know being able to do that initial conversation by video is actually a, a great asset, and it does it does help you to to generate some additional rapport. And frankly, you know, even in the at such point as we're allowed to go out freely again, which is, <laughs> which is a nice dream. It, it, someday I would like Ru to. Russia to, has a vaccine. Russia has a vaccine. Ru yes, Russia yes. has. Um, okay. Yep. along with lots of our ballots. But anyway, that's a whole other topic. <laughs> totally different. Totally we don't talk about politics here. We don't, no. It, no, <laughs> no. Um, so, uh, but, but even then, I, I still think it's valuable to have that first conversation, uh, not necessarily as an in-person. I think a lot of folks, you know, For sure. charge right into the idea of, you know, let's get into in-person. And so that brings me to one of the other things with first meetings. Sometimes you're approached as an agency and someone says, can you come in and present about your capabilities? 
And so if, if you get that phone call from someone that you don't already know, how do you generally handle that? Are you are you pushing for a phone call first or do you you know schedule that presentation or you know what's what's your approach when you get that question? Listen, I'm gonna be perfectly honest. I'm an introvert, so if I don't have to meet you in person, I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> and I'm not also going to waste my time with in-person meetings or sharing my capabilities unless I've already qualified you. So I will always push back and say, We'd love to do that, absolutely. But first, let's have a conversation to see, you know, what your goals are, what you're trying to achieve, and if we're a good fit. That is sound advice, and I think I, I don't think you should ever go into any kind of a presentation situation without having some sort no. of conversation with the prospect in advance. It's just yes. you need to know what they're expecting, who they're expecting. You know, you need to have some more information to, to work on. And this is particularly when I've uh, been involved with projects with larger agencies. It seems to me larger agencies are just like, sure, we'll show up, which to me is right. crazy. Right. And I think part of that is because they have resources and they feel like we're the big kahuna. So, you know, we, we're going to ace this. But the problem is I've seen far too many of those meetings where someone comes in and based off of, you know, two or three minutes of information or an email, you know, they come in and, and we, you know, we've got these ideas, we've got this plan, we've got, you know, we, we, you know, we know where we're going. And that, that first conversation with a prospect needs to be mostly about listening. You need to get them talking. Absolutely. It, it, this Absolutely. Is, even, even if you're asked to do a capabilities presentation or you're asked about capabilities on a phone call with that, and it, you need to turn that around and, and get them Absolutely. talking about what they need. Yes. Yes. Because, I mean, you know, your, I your language say, may not be the same as theirs. So if you right. know their language, and, you can or then the match jargon up. Or, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, one of the things, I, so I get pushback from my agency owner clients on this stuff, and, and they'll say, well, they've asked me for that. Okay, great, but you you can, through the questions that you ask, demonstrate your capabilities. Yep. And it's always, I always say, I want you to try it this way and I want you to just ask questions. And so they'll try it, you know, just because I've asked them to, not because they, they believe me <laughs> necessarily. But then they'll come back and they'll say, oh my gosh, you were right. They told me how smart I was and all I did was ask questions. And I'm like, I know. <laughs> so yes. Get them talking and listen, 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 listen. You can demonstrate your expertise in almost Absolutely. anything far better by the questions that you yes. ask. Absolutely. Than by the opinions that you state. And it is a big problem for a lot of business professionals, not just in the agency space, but they just want to talk so much about what they can do and, and how they are excited about it and, and how they think it'll be a fit. Get the prospect talking, learn from them and, yep. and think about yep. it this way. If you go to the doctor, and yes, we're not doctors, we're not medical professionals, There's, you know, it's not nearly as important to be an agency owner as it is to be a doctor. It's hopefully not life or death in most cases, but <laughs> you can learn from it. And if you go to the doctor and you're the patient, you say, you know, I need a prescription for X. Is the doctor just gonna pull out the pad and start writing? Right. I no. hope not. I hope not. Hope I mean, not. that right. happens on TV shows, right? You know, but it, it generally shouldn't happen in person. It's a little shady yeah. if that's happening. Yeah. So they will start by asking you questions because they want to know. They want to know more about, you know, what, what is the problem that has brought you there? You know, what symptoms do you have? And they want to try to figure out, is that prescription you've asked for what you really need or is it something else? And you need to think the same way. What you're giving to your prospect as an agency is a prescription for their problem. Right. Right. And this is, I mean, this goes beyond that first prospect meeting, but I, I think agencies totally miss the ball more often than not on what the client really wants. Yep. Because because there, we all have this immediate instinct, client asked for this, we want to give them that because that means money flows across to us. Right. That's not a good way. You need to understand what they're really trying to accomplish. I mean, back when I used to build websites, if a client came to me and said, I need a website, why? What are you trying? I mean, particularly this was you know twenty plus years ago. At that point, you didn't necessarily need a website, depending upon what you were doing. Right. It was, it was right. not the same way it is today, where you almost just have to have something at least to check the box. You need to diagnose the the prospect's problem, and that means asking questions. And that first meeting is where that process starts. Absolutely. And, and where you set Absolutely. the stage for that, that you're not you're not just an order taker. You are, yep. You're actually yep. there to help them. Yep. One of the best books I've read on this is A More Beautiful Question. I'm looking at my um, bookshelf. It's a more, a more beautiful question. And it, what it helps you do is exactly what you just 
described, it helps you create, craft your list of questions and then figure out what the sub questions are. So one of the things I like to do is I ask my question and then in a roundabout way, ask why at least three times, if not more to that, to the answer. So you're digging further and further and further and further. And I always know that I've been successful in a meeting. If a prospect says to me, wow, I've never actually said that out loud to anybody before, or I just opened up the kimono to you and we just met. Uh, that those kinds of comments and that happens a lot are um, indicators to me that we've gotten somewhere and that I'm getting some real honest answers about what it is that they need. And you're smirking because I said opening the kimono. Didn't well, and just going back to our <laughs> earlier conversation, I, I was I was thinking as long as they don't actually open the kimono. Yes, please don't actually do that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's a problem. But yeah, I mean, it, it is... And, and you know, and I think that the asking why is tremendous advice. I, you can solve more problems by being curious than anything yep. else. I mean, curiosity yep. may have killed the cat, but it also can make you a lot of money. And <laughs> <laughs> we, so, I, we, as it has been established, you and I like money. We do absolutely, and, and I am, I am curious. I'm just now, I, I like to learn about all sorts of things. Even if I'm not necessarily going to use it, I just I like to learn how does you know how do they make this? Why why is this the way it is? And so one of the things that I like to do in those initial meetings with prospects is to try to to go beyond talking about what the immediate way that I can help them is, and just learn more about their business, learn more yeah. about you know what yeah. because the more that you understand, the the more it helps you figure out where you fit in. So I'll often ask questions, or I did back when I was doing agency. Uh, things myself, you know, I would ask questions about how they operated. I would ask, you know, questions about, mm -hmm. you know, sort of, you know, some of their internal dynamics, depending on what kind of product or service they were selling. Um, and just, and really tried to drill in, you know, if they were, if they were a software company, well, you know, what's your, what's your product development process? You know, what does your team right. look like? You know, where do yep. you get your ideas? Yep. None of that was directly relevant to the work that I was proposing to do for them or would likely propose to do for them, but it helped me get that bigger picture. And so that first meeting is usually a good place to do it because once you start to bring both teams in, it becomes harder to go down that path because once you have teams involved, then right. it does become much more about the mechanics of the relationship and, and the specifics that you can do. So take advantage of that first meeting to go for your curiosity and just explore and see where it takes you. And I would say too, that if you have five people in that first meeting, you're not going to get the honest, unvarnished answers that you're looking for. You're just not going to because somebody's guard will be the other the prospects guard will be up and if they have other people in the room same thing you're just not going to get to the the raw honest truth that you need and and in a lot of cases the raw honest truth is what you need to be able to qualify the prospect right the other thing i would say for these first meetings particularly as we're doing them in the, the world of zoom make sure that they know that they have your full and undivided attention right uh, <laughs> it, it is and i, yes. I it, it is particularly as we're doing more of these video calls, you know, there is that that habit that we all developed when sitting around conference tables to occasionally, you know, take a peek down at our phone and see <laughs> what it says or, you know, kind of glance over it at another screen where we've got, you know, an email pop up or, uh, you know, make sure that you are remaining focused on them because that's that initial impression that you're making about how focused you are on the prospect and their problem is really going to last over the rest of the relationship. Absolutely, absolutely. And I would say the the reverse for them if they're not completely focused and, you know, there's I there's nothing I hate and and I will I will not I will refer you on to somebody else if you are doing that while we're talking and it's, you know, getting my phone out and looking and, you know, it's I I will be like, "Yep, not you don't respect me now, you're not going to respect me later." So Yep. That's a that's a respect thing for me. Yep. The the other thing I in initial meetings is I like to avoid making specific commitments about the solution that I think would work for them. Even if I'm fairly certain I know exactly what it is right out of the gate and, and depending upon, you know, how simple or complex the offerings are of your agency, it may seem obvious. But I me personally, I like to have time to sort of digest everything after the fact. Just for sure. To to sort of think through 
is that really the best solution? So, you know, what I might say in that initial meeting is, you know, my first instinct is that this might be what we would look at and describe generally yep. the services. Yep. Uh, you yep. know, but I, but I, but I will put, particularly if I've got a team, I would say, you know, but I'd like to go back and talk to my team a little bit more about yep. it so that, you know, we yep. can, we can put together some, you know, more solid thinking and, uh, and that, but it also just, it buys you time to think through things because that initial meeting, you're just, you're getting a lot of information, hopefully. And the, the more specific you are about what you can do uh, for them, uh, you know, what you would propose as a solution, what you would charge, it just gives you less wiggle room that as you have a chance to, to think about it, you may make some adjustments. So, um, you know, really, I, I would prefer that you use that first meeting as, as learning and less about talking about, um, you know, what your prescription might be. For sure. And I will add to that, that, you know, we have, as we've discussed, we have a really strict process that we go through. And there's one thing that every client that we work with has, has to do with us. And so I'll say to them, I think we can help you. And here's how, here's how we work. And I describe that process, but we don't talk money. We don't talk timing. We don't talk any of that because I'll say exactly that. But let me go back and talk to the team and talk talk through some of this stuff and come back to you. And then I come back with a, you know, something in writing that mm -hmm. they can react to. Yep. And, For sure. and, it, and if you're spotting red flags in that, try, you know, try to resolve them if you can, right? So if you if there's something that just really pops out at you in that meeting and you can follow up to try to get the information to either resolve the red flag or plant it deeper in the ground, you know, that's that's helpful too. So, you know, don't just hear the red flag and move on. Try to follow that thread a little bit if you can. I mean, you Absolutely. Don't want to, you don't want to make it confrontational by any means, uh, but you do, you know, you don't want to have those nagging concerns because, you know, again, going back to the, the point of using this as a qualification opportunity, the faster that you can determine that this isn't a fit and that, you know, maybe this is mm -hmm. crisis work that's not a good solution for you yep. to offer, but you know someone else you can, the more, the faster you can move them off your plate, the better it is for both sides. Yeah, absolutely. And, and the prospect will remember that. I mean, prospects respect businesses that say, we're not the best fit. Um, yep. And certainly I'm not encouraging you to run around and say, oh, no, no, we don't fit there. We don't fit there because pretty soon you'll have no business. <laughs> but, but you do have to be honest with yourself about whether it is someone that fits within your ideal client definition, someone that you can actually help. Uh, because if you're if you don't, then you're just going to waste both sides time and, and, you know, worsen your own reputation. Right. And I think if you're helpful and you can say, you know, I, I recommend these three agencies and here's why. Right. That they'll also remember that. Yep. So Absolutely. Anything that you can do to be helpful. Absolutely. And apparently my dog is being very helpful right now as well, protecting the house. Well. She has her big girl bark. You, your house may need protection, but I, I don't know if the dog's going to be able to handle all of the things that are threatening your home at the moment. But I am, I am glad that you were able to dispatch the rat. That was. Yeah, the rat, the rat is no longer. The rat is no longer. But for those of you who do not follow Ginny on social media, she had a little bit of a rat issue. And she no longer has a rat issue, or at least not that. There's rat issue. no longer a right. <laughs> it may watch. It probably I mean, like she, we cemented she lives, it she all. She lives down in there. Chicago, so <laughs> you know you, you're not going to be rat free. No. <laughs> right, but it's probably we probably just displaced it to another area of the yard. It's probably what happened. <laughs> yeah. The other day I was on my tractor, you know, mowing my lawn because we live in very different places, and so I have a lot of tractoring I have to do. And I was pretty sure I saw some, I thought it was a country rat, but it, it, it was some large rodent. I'm not sure what Ooh. it was, but I, I scared it off. And then I had oh, you didn't run it over? I, I would I have did. run it over. Well, he was too fast for me. I mean, if he was right there, I, but I, you know, I don't, I don't really want to make a mess either. And yeah, know, that's fair. That would might, be Then you might attract gross. other then, animal, you know, it's just. Yeah. It's not, and then it'd be up in the blades. All right. That's right. fair. But I, I did have to chase off some deer because the deer were hanging out in my backyard and I was trying to to mow and so every time I mowed the area they would then come back and start grazing again there and I'm like no <laughs> no like, get away I'm Go trying away. I, want, I want to get this done quickly I, I'm <laughs> not I don't really want to sit here and have to drive around you so move. that's so funny they're not scared huh yeah I you know it's, it's sort of like uh, you know deer in the you know the, the semi-rural areas of New Hampshire I think are sort of like rats in the cities they're like what's up with you hey what's up <laughs> <laughs> So yes, the rat is no more. <clears throat> on that note, the other thing that is no more is this episode. We are bringing it in <laughs> for a somewhat smooth 
landing or something. So if you've made it all the way, we really appreciate it. Thank you for listening. I'm Chip Griffin. And I'm Jenny Dietrich. And it depends.